Isip mo, lubos na ka. Welcome to our 5 p.m. online worship service. And today is our third week of our series entitled, Awesome God. And I believe po that to some of us, if not most of us, we had an awesome encounter with our God during our five-day prayer, fasting, and consecration. Please do share with us your personal breakthrough because we want to celebrate as well and be encouraged with what God has done 
for your life. And if it's your first time here to tune in with us, thank you for allowing those people who invited you. And if you click that link na na-share sa inyo, marami pong salamat. Thank you for joining us every Sunday here in our online worship service. And we would like to connect with you as well and be a blessing to you. So please do send us here a message or pwede rin po kayong mag-comment ng emoji or wave emoji so that we know if it's your first time and we would like to connect with you here in our service. And before we worship God this afternoon, let me read to you in Psalm chapter 63, verses 3 and 4. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. So as we worship God this afternoon, let's give our all. You know, I, I believe that it's holy unto the Lord as we worship unto Him and be expectant of what God will do in your life as we give praise and worship to our God. Let's praise Him.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love that was displayed on that cross through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that indeed this love that you bestowed on us, Lord God, is so beautiful. And I pray, Lord God, that may we always operate, Lord God, with your love. And I pray, Panginoon, that even as we continually worship you, Lord God, in everything that we do, not just during in our worship service, oh God, I pray, Panginoon, that you will indeed surround us. You will compel us, Lord God, to love other people as well. We thank you, Lord, and we magnify your name. Thank you for your love and thank you that as we continually worship you, may we give back all the glory, the honor, and the praise that is you, your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we will be continuing po, no? to pray for our nation. That as we pray for the nation, let us declare that the gospel will indeed proclaim throughout the nations. Let's pray for uh, this prayer point that will be flashing on our screen. Could you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity again to lift up, Lord God, the nations of the world through our prayer. I pray, Lord God, that as we pray continually, Lord God, your, your hand of, of protection, your hand, Lord God, in proclaiming the gospel, Lord God, will indeed happen. And I pray, Lord God, that as even we continually sow, Lord God, in prayer, one day, Lord God, we will indeed reap, Lord God, people. We will indeed reap, Lord God, uh, those people, Lord God, we will surrender their lives unto you. And I pray, Panginoon, that you will open our eyes as well, Lord God, to just believe, Lord, for the salvation of many, Lord God, many nations, not just only nations, Lord God, but even the young people, Lord God. I pray that we will see, Lord God, as well, the next generation, Lord God, in the nations of the world. We bless your name. Bless the nations, O God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, as we prayed for uh, the young people, e even through our nations, through our prayer points a while ago, I would like us to give an update of what God has done through our campus ministry for the year 2020. I know it's been a challenge for all of us because of this uh, pandemic that most of the effort that we have in our campus ministry, we did it online. But how many of you know that God is indeed moving? There's no pandemic in God. There's no pandemic even when we reach out the campuses. So please uh, watch this video and I hope that you would be inspired to really believe God for the lives of our young people. Let's watch this video. Despite the limitations that came with the new normal, we serve a faithful God who is not bound by limits and continues to radically move in the lives of the next generation. When every effort shifted online, this provided a unique avenue for us to widen our reach. Seasons may have changed, but the mission stays the same. The gospel will be preached, students will be reached, and more leaders will be raised. We held 640 outreach events with over 33,000 participants. Because of this, more than 1,700 new students are now going through one-to-one. -one. 
We had 105 weekly youth services running with an average attendance of 3,200 students watching live. We are reaching students in 630 campuses. And ongoing, there are about 2,000 Victory Group leaders leading more than 2,300 Victory Groups with over 11,600 students in attendance. 429 students went through Victory Weekend with 127 of them being baptized in water. As campus missionaries, what we really hope is that our students will grow closer to God and grow stronger in their relationship with Him. For them to realize that He is their refuge, He is their peace. Yung fear na nararamdaman nila sa future, yung fear na kinakatawag nila sa future, if the gospel is in their hands, I am looking forward sa gagawin ni God in the future. Our hope is that in the midst of all of the challenges that they face, that these students would know that there is a source of hope that never runs out, that never changes, that never fades in the midst of everything. And that the only way that they can really have true rest, true peace, and true hope in this season is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. As we look back at 2020, we have seen so much of God's faithfulness. Truly, His ways are higher than ours. On behalf of Every Nation Campus, we would like to thank you for your partnership, prayers, encouragement, and support, even in this challenging time. Your partnership plays a crucial role in our campus ministry. Together, let's look forward to a new year in faith that God will do even more amazing things. On behalf of our campus missionaries, thank you for supporting, thank you for praying that indeed the gospel will proclaim even in the campuses. And for our time of giving, I believe this is also a time for us to worship God through our giving. Let me read to you in the book of Exodus chapter 25 verses 1 to 2. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. I believe Paul, that this verse is telling us that giving is really a worship from our heart. That from Old Testament to the New Testament, God promised that when we give, there is a reward. And thank you po for sacrificially giving. Even to some of us, my need po tayo. But I believe po, no? that as we worship God through our giving, may we surrender our heart as well unto Him because that is the best worship that we can give is when we give that comes from our heart. Let me pray before we give. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, that you have given us, Lord God, to give our tithes and offering. And I pray, Lord God, that as we uh, indicate even, Lord God, through our heart, Lord, that heart to give, I pray, Panginoon, that you will as well give the desires of our heart. Thank you, Lord God, for the answered prayers. Thank you for the breakthroughs that you're going to do, Lord God, in the lives of everyone. And thank you that as we give this tithes and offering that we have, Lord God, you will be able to give it a hundredfold. And may this give glory unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. For your giving, may iba po tayong options, but you can visit our website, victory.org.ph slash give. Or you can give through our Gcash app by scanning our QR code. Also, you can give through our PayMaya app by giving through your credit card or debit card. Meron din naman po tayo if uh, you have these banks with you you can give through our direct bank deposit to the accounts on your screen. Or if online giving is a challenge for you and would like to use the offering envelope, you may personally drop your giving to the tight box. So please visit our Victory Metro East Center every Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Paalala lang po to practice and uh, safety and health protocols when you visit our center. Also, let us know how we can assist you. Please give us a message here in our
Facebook page. Or you can text this uh, phone number that will be shown on your screen. We will be happy po to serve you. Let us ready our hearts as we hear the preaching of God's Word this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our online worship service. We're now on the third week of our series entitled, Awesome God. And what a fitting way to start the year than with the awesomeness of God, with all the things happening around us, with all the things happening within us. We need a revelation and an encounter of how awesome God is, isn't it? And whenever I think about the word awesome, I'm usually reminded of the word Wow! Meron na ba kayo na experience na gan? Perhaps you've seen a view so beautiful that you were at a loss for words and all you could say is, Wow, Lord, ang ganda ng view na to. Or perhaps have you seen a performance so spectacular or an experience so wonderful that all you could say is, Wow, Lord, ang galing. Wow, ang ganda. Perhaps some of you, that's the way you feel whenever you look at your spouse or your kids. Mapapatay ko na lang, wow, talaga Lord, binigyan mo sila sa akin. Or perhaps there has been a miracle in your life lately that you didn't expect, it was so outrageous, and all you could say is, wow. Whenever we hear the word awesome, we were reminded of the word wow. And that's what we want to accomplish as we start and go through this series that the more we know the names of God as He reveals Himself in Scripture, we could say, wow, Lord, ganyan ka pala. Wow, Lord, mas kilala kita ngayon. Wow, Lord, dahil mas kilala kita ngayon, mas in love ako sa'yo ngayon, mas kaya kitang i-obey ngayon, mas kaya kong tumuloy sa buhay ngayon kasi wow, Lord, Ganyan ka pala ka-awesome. And that's what we want to accomplish, that as we get to know God more, as we have a deeper understanding of who God is, His character, His attributes, we will live for Him and live a life of holiness, worship, and mission for Him. Bakit ba natin gustong mas makilala si God? Why? Because how we know Him affects how we relate to Him and how we respond to Him. How we know God affects how we relate and respond to Him. That's why we want to get to know God more and His awesome character, His awesome attributes revealed in Scripture. So to give you a recap, in week one, in a time when Moses was feeling inadequate and incapable of the task that God has sent for him to do, God revealed Himself as the awesome God, Yahweh, Jehovah, the Lord, the great I Am. In a time when Moses was encountering a situation that was beyond him, God revealed himself to Moses as Yahweh, the self-existent God. But though this self-existent God is so powerful, so mighty, yet this self-existent God chooses to be in covenant with his people. That's week one. God revealed himself to Moses as Yahweh, Jehovah, the Lord, the great I am. Week two, we talked about last week, God revealing Himself to Gideon in a time where Gideon was encountering turmoil and troubles externally and also the people of God were having troubles in their relationship with God internally. They were having peace. They, they didn't have peace externally and internally and yet the way God revealed Himself to Gideon, Jehovah Shalom, God is peace. You see, different people in the Bible who encountered different situations, had different revelations of who God is. But the amazing thing here is, in spite of how awesome God is, He chooses to reveal Himself to His people. He chooses to reveal Himself to you and to me. Ang hirap pong makilala ng taong ayaw magpakilala, di ba? Kahit anong stock mo sa Facebook, kung ayaw niyang magpakilala sa'yo, tataguan ka niya at ibablock ka niya. But the amazing thing about our awesome God is that He reveals Himself to His people. He wants to make Himself known to His people. Different situations, but in those different difficult situations, God gave them a different revelation na saktong-sakto sa pinagdadaanan nila. Meron po ba kayong pinagdadaanan ngayon na kailangan yung mas makilala pa si God? God will surely make Himself known to you in whatever situation you are in. So today on our third week, we're gonna talk about a different name that God reveals Himself in Scripture. It's Elroy, the Lord who sees me. 
But let me ask you this question as we begin. Have you ever been in a difficult situation? Yung iba po sa atin dito, when we talk about a difficult situation, alam na alam nyo po yung sinasabi ko. Difficulty pa lang. Masasabi nyo na, ako yun. Yan yung pinagdadaanan ko ngayon. Perhaps, 2020 has really been a difficult year. Kaka-start pa lang ng 2021, difficult pa rin. Perhaps you're going through a difficult marriage. You're having a difficult time in parenting. A difficult time in school, at work, difficulty in finances. Have you ever been in a difficult situation? Or perhaps, maybe hindi ka makarelate, all is well with you, but you see, it's just a matter of time. All of us will go through difficult situations. So I'm glad you're here listening to this preaching today. So first group of people, if you're encountering a difficult situation, this preaching is for you and for all of us who will be encountering difficult situations. This preaching is for all of us. On the other hand, have you, for those of you tuning in today, have you at one point in your life felt rejected, unloved, insignificant, or unwanted, forgotten, unheard, and unseen? Probably you're here and you've felt the pain of being rejected, being unwanted, being unloved, being forgotten. This preaching is also for you. Because those two situations, being in a difficult situation and being rejected and unwanted, these were the situations of the person that God chooses to meet and God chooses to reveal Himself to. Is it possible to have the strength to endure when times are difficult? What encouragement does the Bible give to those who feel rejected, unwanted, unloved, and insignificant? That's what we're going to talk about as we open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 16, verse 7 to 11. Genesis 16, verse 7 to 11, and verse 13. Could you open your Bibles? Let's read it. Genesis 16, verse 7 to 11. And then we're going to skip to verse 13. It says there, the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to shore. And he said to Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be outnumbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has listened to your affliction. Verse 13. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are a God of seeing. For she said, Truly hear I have seen him who looks after me. Let's pray. Lord, as you have revealed yourself to Hagar, may you reveal yourself to us that as we know you more, we would love you more and live for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So the story that we read was the story of Hagar and how God revealed one of his names to her as Elroy, the God who sees. But you see, there's more to the story than meets the eye. To give you a background or the context of the story, the verses that we just read, Hagar is the servant of Abram and Sarai. You see, we're now in Genesis 16, but it's only in Genesis 17 that God changes the name of Abram to Abraham and Sarai to Sarah. So here, we see the story of Hagar, servant of Abram and servant of Sarai. So, in Genesis chapter 12, uh, just to backtrack a little before the story that we heard, God calls Abraham to go to a place that he will show him. And uh, so Abraham and his wife, his family, moved from the place of Ur to the place of Haran, finally to the place of Canaan. Now somewhere in their stay in Canaan, a famine hits the land. So they go to a side trip to Egypt. So ang pinapapuntahan po ni God sa kanila, Canaan, pero dahil nagka-famine, pumunta sila muna sa Egypt. And probably that's where they got Hagar, their servant. Genesis 12, 16 says this, And for her, Sarah's sake, he, Pharaoh, dealt with Abram, and he had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male servants, 
female servants, female donkeys and camels. So it was probably here in Genesis chapter 12 that Hagar was given to the family of Abram and Sarai as a slave. So Genesis 12, in that time, God speaks to Abram and gives him a promise. To your offspring, I will give this land. Genesis 13, God speaks to Abram again and says, I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth. If one can count the dust of the earth, so your offspring can be counted. Pag tumingin ka, Abram, sa sand, kung gano'n mo yan hindi mabibilang, gano'n hindi mabibilang yung offspring mo. Genesis 13. In Genesis 15, God says to Abram again, Your son, your own son shall be your heir. And this time, God tells him to look not at the sun, but at the stars. At the number of the stars, if you could number them, that's how your offspring will be. So three times, God says to Abraham, you will have an offspring of your own. God tells him that he will have a son, but he doesn't tell him how. Now, Genesis 16, that's, the, that's where we are right now. The verses that we read earlier, they've been 10 years living in Canaan. And... Here's what happens in the background of the story. Verse 1 says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And she had a female Egyptian whose name was Hagar. So 10 years living in Canaan. A few years back, God spoke, they'll have children. So at this point, probably 10 years of waiting. The question was, Lord, will this still happen? Now, Sarai wasn't still able to conceive. And verse 2 says, And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. Here in this scripture, Sarai takes matters into her own hands and thinks that maybe it's not really my own offspring. Maybe it's the offspring of Hagar through Abram that God's promise will be fulfilled. Now, just a side note on this story. It says there, Abraham listened to the voice of Sarai. How many of you here tuning in and you're married and you're happy that you're married to your spouse? It's good to listen to your spouse, okay? Like Abraham listened to Sarai. But more importantly, more than listening to our spouse, I hope we listen to God first and foremost. I pray that God's voice will be loudest. So here in this story, Abram listened to the voice of Sarai more than the promises of God. How many times have we believed God's promises and yet, like Sarai, took matters into our own hands? But you see, God will fulfill His promises according to His ways, according to His timing, not according to ours. So in verse 3, continuing on with the story, So after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. Now, if you'd notice here, this might seem like a really weird practice, but it was a common practice in the first century for people who uh, weren't accustomed to knowing God. Again, uh, if you look at the book of Genesis, Scripture tells us, one man and one woman will become one flesh. But here it was a common practice that if a woman couldn't bear a son, a servant could bear a son for the husband. So that's what happened. Hagar was given as a slave to bear a son for Abram in behalf of Sarai. Now, you see, the Bible describes this incident, but God doesn't prescribe this. Never in the entire council of Scripture does God promote having multiple wives. Never in the council of Scripture does God endorse or tolerate polygamy. And every time you see that in the Bible, it always doesn't look good and it always doesn't end well. You'll see that in the story of Solomon, in Elkanah's wife, Hannah and Penina. So you see that also here in the story of Sarah and Hagar. God doesn't endorse having multiple wives. But here in the story, it describes that it was a common practice. So Hagar is given to Abram to bear a child in behalf of Sarai. And in Genesis 16 verse 4, it says there, And when she, Hagar, saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. In the CEV, Contemporary English Version, it says, She, or Hagar, became proud and treated Sarai hatefully. 
Hagar becomes pregnant and as a response, hates Sarai. And Sarah blames Abraham. Sarah treats Hagar harshly. Ang nangyari po, nagkagulo-gulo na. Dahil naasar na si Hagar. Sabi nga ng asawa ko, si Hagar sa hirap ng buhay na Hagar. Si Hagar na Hagar. Genesis 16 verse 6 says there, Then Sarai dealt harshly with Hagar, and she fled from her. Then Sarai treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. Imagine this for a moment. Hagar's difficult situation. She was an Egyptian. She was not an Israelite, so she was a foreigner. To top it off, she was a slave. She was the second wife. She was pregnant, and she was being treated harshly. That was the difficult situation that she was in. Perhaps some of you, you're also experiencing another difficult situation. Probably not like Hagar's, but you know the situation that you are in is so difficult even to the point of quitting. Maybe like Hagar, you're at that situation na alam mo lang, mag-quit na kaya ako dito, ang hirap eh. That's what the situation that she was in. But I love how the Lord meets her in that difficult situation. The scripture that we read earlier, Genesis 16, verse 7. Genesis 16, verse 7 says this, The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to shore. The way to shore was a road that was going back to the land of Egypt. Could it be that when Hagar quit because of her difficult situation, she was going back to where she came from? Probably. But you see, in this situation, in, in her difficult situation, Hagar was not looking for God. In a time of rejection, Hagar was not looking for God. But God found Hagar. God found Hagar. The angel of the Lord found her. When you see this phrase, the angel of the Lord, in the Old Testament, scholars would believe that this was the pre-incarnate Christ. So every time people encountered the angel of the Lord, people would always say that they have met God. So here, the angel of the Lord or the pre-incarnate Christ, God himself, finds Hagar in a difficult situation and meets with her. If you've ever asked that question, God, where are you when it's difficult? God, what are you doing when it's difficult? Here in this story, you will find your answer. When it's difficult, God goes after you and God finds you, just like he did with Hagar. God found and met Hagar in a difficult situation. God found and met Hagar in difficulty and in rejection. And the same God who found and met Hagar is the same God who finds you and meets you whenever you're facing a difficult situation or whenever you're facing rejection. God finds us and meets us in difficulty and in rejection. And this is what the angel says, Genesis 16, verses 8 to 9. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? And she said, I'm fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord says to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. Let me pause for a while. Yes, God found Hagar. God met Hagar in that difficult situation. But notice what God's encouragement was. Return to your mistress and submit to her. Return to that difficult situation. It's as if God was saying, don't quit. Don't quit. For some of you tuning in with us this afternoon, probably that's also the message that God is saying to you as you face a difficult situation. God is meeting you, but God is saying, don't quit. Don't quit your marriage. Don't quit your family. Don't quit praying. Don't quit believing. Don't quit waiting. Don't quit. Go back, God says to Hagar. But even as God gives the command to go back, as God gives the command not to quit, here are two ways that God reveals himself to Hagar that enables her to go back, that enables her to bounce back. Two ways that God revealed himself to Hagar in a time of difficulty and rejection. First is that God listens to our affliction. 
God listens to our affliction. Verses 10 to 11 of Genesis 16, it says there, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had listened to your affliction. God listens to our affliction. God's instruction to Hagar, the name of your baby will be Ishmael, so that every time you see Ishmael, you'll be reminded, I hear your misery, I hear your affliction. In the NIV, it's translated as, for the Lord has heard your misery. We've talked about it earlier, how miserable Hagar's life might have been, how difficult it might have been to live that kind of life. But here, we see the awesome God revealing himself, and he says, I am the God who hears your misery. And every time Hagar would see Ishmael, she'd be reminded, your name is Ishmael, which means God hears. God listens to your affliction. God hears your misery. What an awesome God we have. First way that God revealed himself to Hagar, God listens to our afflictions. Are there things in your life that you've been praying about, crying about? Perhaps only God sees your tears. Only God hears your prayer. Only God knows your cry. But you see, God hears your affliction. God listens to your affliction. Probably, meron kang matagal ng hinaeng, prayer, prayer request, na parang ang tagal-tagal na, parang wala pang nangyayari. Let me encourage you. God hears. God listens. And the name Ishmael doesn't just mean God hears. It means in the original language to hear and to answer. God hears. God answers. We have a God who listens to our affliction. Second encouragement, second way that God reveals himself to Hagar. First, God listens to our affliction. Second, God looks after us. God looks after us. Genesis 16 verse 13, it says there, so she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are a God of seeing. For she said, Truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Here we see the name of God revealed, El Roy, the God of seeing, the God who sees me. In the New International Version, it's translated, You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. Can you imagine this with me? Perhaps Hagar has heard about God. For God was speaking to Abram. And God had promised Abram and Sarai that they will have a child. But this time, Hagar doesn't just hear about God from a third-party perspective. Here, God appears to her personally. And so she finally says, You're not just the God of Abram. You're not just the God of Sarai. You are the God who sees me. This is an encouragement for those of you who are probably feeling rejected, abandoned, unseen, unnoticed. For some of you, you may be in your home, but you feel unseen and unnoticed, unappreciated. For some of you here, you, you may be thinking, Lord, ang sakit na, rejected ako ng mga mahal ko sa buhay. For the singles here who got their hearts broken, who got rejected, God sees you. God sees that pain. Are there difficulties in your life that you feel like no one sees? God does. Do you feel that you are unseen, insignificant, rejected, unloved? God is saying, He sees you. God sees you. You are not unseen. You are not forgotten. God is looking after us. That verse says, I have been looking after you. You are a God of seeing, for she said, Truly, I have seen him who looks after me. Second way that God revealed himself to Hagar, he is looking after us. God looks after us. What an awesome God we have. First, God meets Hagar, God finds Hagar, and then reminds her, I am listening to your affliction, and I am looking after you. And after God meets Hagar, after that story, Hagar finally returns back to Abram and Sarai. Yes, the difficulty was still there. 
Scripture doesn't say how she was treated afterwards when she went back. But when she went back, she found the strength to return because now she knew the God who listens to her and the God who looks after her. Same God that revealed himself to Hagar is the same God who's revealing himself to us. He is listening to us and he is looking after us. What an awesome God we have. That he would include not just Abram and Sarai, the people that he has chosen, but that God has included Hagar, a foreigner, a humble servant, a slave, a people of a different nationality, and included her to be a part of God's blessing. For all of us listening to this preaching, for those of you going through a difficult situation, let me encourage you, God listens and God looks after you. For those of you feeling rejected, you are not unseen. You are seen by God. Or probably, hindi ka dun sa dalawang scenario na yun. Wala kang difficult situation, hindi ka feeling rejected. But probably, you know people who are like that. I pray that you would also encourage them. That God listens and looks after them. And would you include, let me challenge you. If you know people who are feeling alone, abandoned, rejected, unloved, would you also invite them and reflect the missional God who includes all people from all walks, of, all walks of life? Would you invite people so that they too, like Hagar, could be included and feel the blessing of God? As an application and as we end, we can have strength to endure in difficult times because we have an awesome God who listens and looks after us. We can have strength to endure in difficult times because we have an awesome God who listens and looks after us. Let me pray. Lord, we thank you for revealing yourself to Hagar that you are the God who listens and that you are the God who looks after us. And Lord, you don't just listen and look after us. You find us and meet us in times of difficulty. Lord, with the situation that we are in as a nation, amidst COVID-19, amidst this pandemic, amidst financial instability, amidst difficulties that we will be facing this 2021, we declare that you are our awesome God, our Elroy, the God who sees, the God who listens, the God who looks after us. So Lord, may we find strength in difficult times. Let me pray for those of you who are facing a difficult situation. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are facing a difficult situation. Lord, we speak a breakthrough. We speak a miracle, Lord God, that you would come through for them. You would meet them, find them, and speak to them, encourage them in this difficult time. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for one more group of people. If you are here and you just know you feel rejected, unloved, unseen, and God would like to remind you that you are not unnoticed. God sees you and He is mindful of you. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are feeling alone, left out, rejected, unwanted, unloved. God, I pray that you would remind them that you are a God who sees. They are not unnoticed. You see them, Lord, and you will meet them where they are. Could we all lift up our hands to God? Lord, as a people... May we reflect you, the covenant God who includes people from all walks of life in your blessing, in a relationship with you. Lord, as a people, may we reflect you and may we include so many people to be part of your family, to be part of your kingdom. Help us to reach out, Lord, to more people so that they will encounter you, the God who listens, the God who looks after us, and the God who who finds us and meets us. We love you, Lord. We love you, our God who hears and our God who sees. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you need prayer, please feel free to message us here in the comment section below. We would love to get to know you and pray for you. God bless you. Have a blessed week ahead.